Yo, what's going on guys? So very often I am getting asked which one of the characters out of all of the free-to-play available heroes would I recommend starting with. Also, from what I noticed, a lot of players, uh, when they are progressing through the nether realm, they are getting stuck, they ask uh, how to get their first FE or what they should uh, spend it on because they are just struggling with the damage. So to answer all of these uh, questions, I decided to make a pretty interesting project. So what I did is I created a new account on which I made a full playthrough from 0 up to time mark 7, fully free to play and also even without trading. At the start I uh, wanted to do some trading because I wanted to show people which items they should uh, buy early on, but unfortunately on a new account you cannot use Auction House uh, for 24 hours. So it is still gonna be a pretty informative because this way you're gonna know uh, how to play through the Netherrealm even without buying anything. And also at the end I'm gonna give you some suggestions uh, what you can go for. And the character I decided to go for is Order Calling uh, Commander Moto for two reasons. First of all, I just have a lot of experience with that character. I've been playing minions uh, very often, so I feel like I can give you the most amount of information about this hero. And on top of that, very often I recommend this hero because it is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, season starters. So the full run took around uh, 10 hours, and in today's video I basically want to go over everything that I did. And if you want to watch the full run, I'm also gonna upload uh, the VOD from my uh, Twitch stream when I did this uh, challenge. So if you are interested in that, uh, make sure to watch that video. So like I said, I was playing with Order Calling Commander Moto and the minion I was using is Machine Guard. Because in my opinion, they are better during the campaign uh, than the uh, Spider Tanks because they don't rely uh, as much on command. Uh, and if you are interested in uh, how to go through the campaign with Order, Order Calling Commander Moto, uh, make sure to check out my guide on Max Roll. So during the campaign, I didn't really focus too much on picking up items. The only important thing is I found two swords with 1.65 attack speed, so I can leap attack as fast as possible. Uh, minions usually deal a very, very high amount of damage, especially during the campaign, so you don't need uh, that much damage on your weapon or on any uh, parts of your gear. But after I reached level 40, which basically is after the first three acts, uh, I started looking for gear with high energy. So basically I was mousing over every item on the uh, ground. Well, not every, just most of them. And I was just checking how much energy do they have. And if they have high amount of energy, I would also uh, check for the stats. So if uh, it would show me that my survival uh, drops down by like 20, 30%, I would not pick it up. But if it would drop down even by like 5, 10%, it still is fine. You shouldn't really die too much, but preferably, obviously, you would also want your survival to go up. And for the weapons, like I said, I still uh, kept a very fast weapon, so 1.65 attack speed. And eventually I also enchanted them with the tier 2 attack speed uh, from the enchant so that uh, you leap attack even faster. I believe with the enchant uh, I had around 1.8 uh, attack per second on the weapons. Another important thing to focus on at this point is uh, hero relics, memories and divinity slates. Because from what I noticed, once you enter the maps, from the cube of rapacity, you're gonna very often get uh, currency rewards of things like flame sand, uh, desire beads, and so on. But during the last two chapters of the story, you're very often gonna get hero relics, memories, and divinity slates. And they are actually not even that, but you might think, oh, they're gonna be uh, low item level, so they're gonna be terrible, but actually not. I did find all of my divinity slates, hero memory, and relics during th that time. I don't think I actually replaced any of them up until the Traveler 7. And when it comes to the minion builds on your hero relics and memories, I would definitely focus on getting overload effect, maybe hero memory effect, uh, overload duration or just overall skill duration, cooldown recovery for both overload and for everything because overload is one of the uh, most important sources of your damage. So just make sure your overload is up all the time and uh, if you have permanent uptime then you can remove a little bit of uh, cooldown recovery or duration if you have it on uh, memories or relics and then focus on just getting uh, overload effect. 
On top of that, things like uh, obviously minions damage and attack speed are uh, also pretty good. On Divinity Slates though, I would focus on things like critical strike damage, critical strike chance for minions, uh, attack speed, command generation, and if you can, try to also find any Divinity Slates with minus sealed mana, because eventually you are probably gonna need at least one of them, and it, this is exactly what I needed to fit all of my auras. Eventually I had to find uh, one Divinity Slate with uh, minus sealed mana, and to do that I also was using my uh, wedges. So if you find any decent slate with let's say one or two modifiers, or even you have some uh, FE and you can just buy them for uh, pretty cheap, uh, remember that you can brand them by using wedges and this way you add additional modifiers to them and early on this is one of the best ways to uh, increase your uh, player power so don't forget about hero memories hero relics and slates because they are very very important and if i had any uh, currency and i could uh, use my auction house i definitely would buy some uh, divinity slates relics and memories early on Okay, so after I finished the campaign, I started uh, progressing through the netherrealm. So the way I like to do it is I like to go to as high time mark possible, as fast as possible. So I basically start with Glacier Abyss, I kill the first water, then I go to uh, Blistering Lava Sea, and I also kill the first water, then I go back to uh, Glacier Abyss, but to time mark uh, 2, do the same thing, and then continue this way. So basically, clear all of the possible time marks 1 in every zone, uh, then do the same thing for uh, time mark 2, then time mark 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the way I do it is I find the uh, smallest map in the zone. So for example, in the Glacier Abyss, that would be Demiman uh, Village, in my opinion. For the Blistering Lava, that would be Twisted Valley. In Steelforge, to be honest, I don't think there is any actual uh, small map. All of them are kind of whatever, so it doesn't really matter which one you go for. In Thunder Waste, it's definitely the Obscured Plaza, and in Void Lands, to be honest, I don't really remember that well, but uh, one of the best ones is uh, Filthy Forest. So you just find one very fast zone, and you just continue doing that. I don't really focus too much on uh, getting the, uh, or on doing the maps with good cards. Uh, the only exception is the maps with the additional uh, stage uh, points rewards because this way you can just kill waters uh, faster so that means you can progress through the time marks even faster so for example in here i would do the abandoned one mines for one additional stage point i actually would here uh, first do the minimum village because i'm three out of four so i'll do the uh, uh, just one map for one point, so this one this one point is not being wasted. I would kill the water, then I would go to time mark two, then I would do the uh, abandoned mines, then uh, sinking sand for one additional inheritance, and this way I would get three additional points, so it would be way faster. And then if there is no any additional cards for the stage point, I just uh, would continue spamming Demimum Village until I reach, uh, I reach higher time mark, then I would change zone, and I would, I would do the same thing here, but with Twisted Valley, and just continue doing the same zone over and over again. Uh, the only exception is when I would actually run out of the uh, beacons, then I would start clearing map a bit more, maybe kill a bit more monsters, and also if you start missing some XP, maybe you uh, are getting a bit weaker, but usually if you pick up any items with as high energy as possible, which is like I said, it's what I started doing uh, from level 40, uh, you should be good. Also at this point it is a very good idea to start enchanting your gear. So what I did is when I found any gear with a high amount of energy, I went to a crafting vendor and I used prototype uh, crafting to just lock one random modifier. If the item had something good, obviously I, will, I would lock that one. If all of them were kind of bad, I would lock whatever and then just roll a few times until I hit uh, something decent, uh, preferably some minion damage, and then I would just enchant with random, a random one last modifier, preferably some resistances, life or minion damage. So now I want to show you exactly the gear I ended up with. So as you can see, I was just using random weapons because they have very high uh, attack speed and Hero Longsword have a pretty good attack speed and I found these ones with high amount of energy. 
Because rolling energy early on can be pretty difficult, you usually don't have that many energy cores, I just decided to find ones with already good amount of energy. And if the item didn't have a free uh, suffix, I would uh, use prototype crafting on these ones, I didn't have to do it, and I just enchanted with the uh, gear attack speed. In case you are wondering, uh, when you are uh, enchanting with the uh, second to the lowest uh, possible tier, you only have to pay uh, one flame sun. Flame sun. So just to show you uh, on this one, uh, gear attack speed. The best one is uh, ten flame sun, but the second, the best one is only one. You can also go with the lowest one, which is just flame dust. But usually, I would go, I would go with just one flame sun. So it's very cheap to enchant all of your gear. So that's what I did with my weapons. Just fast attack speed and enchant attack speed and this one already uh, dropped with a pretty good roll of attack speed so i also kept that one and for the weapons most important thing as a weapon on the on the helmet i mean is you want to have one free prefix because you can enchant minion damage on the helmet so uh, for this helmet i believe i found it with pretty high energy and chance for minions to deal double damage then i use prototype crafting to lock the uh, chance to deal double damage i rolled it until i hit decent amount of resistances one fear prefix, and then I just enchanted minion damage. And the chest, actually I, this chest I found with low amount of energy, but it is high item level, which means it can roll with uh, energy cores uh, up to very high energy. So I decided to actually risk it, and on this one I used all of my energy cores, and I did hit 118 energy, which is pretty good. And the reason why I went for it on this chest is because it had uh, percentage minion damage and maximum uh, life. I also tried to uh, roll it for even more uh, resistances or maybe some life, but I wasn't uh, lucky, so I just kept this one. Also, as you can hear, see here, it has one free suffix, so I could uh, even crafted the uh, resistances, but I'm pretty sure at this point I don't need any of them. Actually, I could have crafted some erosion resist, so I guess that was a mistake. On the amulet, I did find an amulet with plus one minion skill level. It is kind of rare to find one like that, but I actually found two of them. So it's not even that rare. And I ended up doing the same thing. I just rolled with a prototype crafting for uh, one flame sand each time. And like with enchanting, it is pretty cheap to do it. Like I said, you just uh, what you do is you block one modifier and then you just roll. So for this one, it is free flame sun because it's actually high item level. When items are uh, lower level, you actually have to pay only uh, one flame sun. Maybe I'm gonna find one that I can show you. So this one level 76. Oh, it is also free. But yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. Just uh, when you start the progressing through the nether realm, most of your items when you're gonna roll them are only gonna cost one flame sun for the roll, and higher level ones are gonna be free. So that's what I did with this one, just locked the minion uh, skill level. I rolled until I hit 5% uh, minion attack and cast speed, which is a decent mod. I didn't really, really need any uh, defenses at this point, so I just kept it. And I crafted the resistance, uh, which I removed right now just to show you the crafting process. The gloves, a similar process here. I just found them with very high amount of energy and I locked one of the resistances and I rolled until I hit the other ones. Uh, then I had one free uh, prefix and one free suffix, so I decided to use the uh, targeted processing and I did hit a uh, region life, which is a decent mod, so I kept it and I crafted some resist. Belt, the same thing, I just found one with minion damage. Uh, on belts and rings you don't uh, get any energy and also on amulets, so you don't care about the level of energy. I just found them with a good amount of minion damage and I rolled with prototype crafting with locking minion damage until I hit some good resistances. Uh, you can also, if you find one with let's say good amount of life or, or resist, you can roll until you get minion damage. But to be honest, uh, it is kind of rare to hit a pretty good uh, tier of minion damage, so I recommend starting with that. And usually you're not gonna need that much uh, resistances modifiers and you can just get them in other slots so i would highly focus on getting minion damage on the belt and on the rings so on this ring unfortunately i didn't find one but on this one i do have minion damage and some additional additional resistances 
Also for the weapons, I did find some interlocking soul, but unfortunately they have very low amount of energy. But if you find one with high amount of energy, then you can either corrode them, which is what I did here, and I unfortunately removed my implicit, so I lost 30% minion damage. And you can use interlocking souls for bosses if you are lacking damage, or even if you are progressing through the uh, nether realm and you are just uh, struggling with damage during maps, you can also go for interlocking souls, but remember they are pretty slow, only 1.1 attack speed, so you are going to be way slower. But, like I said, if you are struggling with damage, go for it. Now for the skill gems, I actually ended up switching to spider tanks around level 80, because at this point I realized that I have pretty good cooldown recovery, and uh, I do have few charges of Dark Gate, which meant that I actually could keep above uh, 50 command decently often with my uh, Dark Gate, and also some additional uh, command generation, which meant that I could start using spider tanks. Because with spider tanks to have a decent clear, uh, you need to have 50 command for two additional projectiles. You can also just use uh, uh, additional projectiles from the uh, support. Let me find one just to show you. Here is the greater multiple projectiles. It's going to give you plus four or maybe the, uh, the other one for just plus two. But you're going to lose damage. So if you're struggling on damage, don't do that. If you have pretty good damage, go for it. Uh, I just decided to swap to them around level 80 because I felt like at this point I do have pretty good amount of uh, command. And the reason why you want to use spider tank is because they have this modifier, 6% additional spider tank damage for every spider tank summoned, which means that they just deal way more damage than uh, guards. So I went for them. And here you can see all of my uh, supports. And I started using recklessness on them once I got the uh, last stand trade because at this point uh, your minions are immortal and they also gain additional damage when they are on low life if you are struggling with getting them to low life maybe you can go for go for broke because this way they are gonna lose 60 percent life when they gain overload but if uh, they are on low life always you can go for rest and ready which is what i did for additional overload duration and uh, attack and cast speed and like I said earlier, for the uh, Hero Alexan Memories, I just went for Overload Effect. And on this one, I got uh, some command when they get Overload, which is kind of whatever, doesn't really matter that much here. Just some additional minion damage, Overload Duration, Command Generation per second, and here also Command Generation per second. So uh, they are not uh, that amazing, but definitely they give you a little bit uh, more damage. For the Slates, and again, like I said earlier, just focus on getting some additional damage. You can roll them with the uh, wedges for some additional modifiers. Here, unfortunately, I didn't get anything. On this one, I have some minion attack and cast speed, and I also didn't really hit anything. Uh, this one has additional uh, physical damage to minions and chance to deal double damage. And I got plus 5 elemental resist, which is decent. But on this one, I got lucky and I got minus 4 sealed mana. So I don't really care about the other modifiers. This is the most important thing because I actually needed the uh, sealed mana to be able to fit all of my auras. So for auras, I'm using precise projectiles with some of Thunder Spirit and Mark so that this Thunder Spirit can apply Mark. And the reason why I'm using this one is because attack and cast speed increases your leap attack speed. So like I said earlier, uh, I highly focus on uh, being as fast as possible when I'm progressing through the uh, nether realm. For the other auras, I was using Rejuvenation with Seal Conversion and uh, Magical Swords. I actually here uh, didn't have energy because I unequipped some uh, items. Uh, so this is what I did for some additional uh, regeneration. And Magical Swords uh, was needed because I removed the uh, summon uh, Frost Spirit and this one gives you mana recovery so without this one I had to go for magical source so I can sustain my mana and for the last aura I was using weapon amplification and these ones don't, don't matter I was just leveling some uh, spider tags but to be honest I ended up not even using them so yeah this is my setup just weapon amplification precise projectiles thunder spirit and uh, some uh, mana and life regen from seal conversion and if you don't have enough mana for all of these uh, skills i would remove precise projectiles and go for uh, summon frost spirit and for my other skills i was using machine guards machine army i mean with some cooldown recovery uh, mass effect in extended duration leap attack with mobility harden it and precision strike because it actually gives you a little bit more attack speed and dark gate with cooldown reduction and extender duration now for the talents 
I went for God of Machines, obviously, because this is just uh, main minion uh, talent tree. Then uh, I went for Machinist for one additional uh, minion from the uh, boss. Because early on, you can't really buy the boots that give plus one uh, minion quantity, so I just had to use this one early on. Eventually, when you're playing Order Calling, you probably will want to swap to Alchemist. And the last three is Warlock, because this one just gives a ton of uh, quality of life and things like cooldown recovery, uh, minus sealed mana, and so on. So this is just a very good tree for uh, summoners. And here you get even more cooldown recovery from the uh, major talent. And for the facts, like I was saying, I was uh, doing fully free-to-play playthrough, so I didn't really have any facts. I only bought one of them for the three crystals that I got, so I can turn on the uh, auto loot, not the advanced one, just the regular one. So uh, this is the uh, pact tree that I had. In case you are wondering about my DPS on this build, uh, let me quickly show you. I was doing around, I believe, between 10 and 20 million DPS, and for killing uh, Traveral on Tamrak 7, it is definitely enough. In my opinion, if you have 20 million, it should be uh, not even an issue, but if you are around 10 million, you probably still can kill him, it's just uh, not gonna be as easy. And if you would ask me what kind of items you should focus on buying early on, is I would definitely recommend buying items with just high amount of energy and on top of that just one good modifier. So for example on the ring you would just buy a ring with high amount of uh, minion damage. Obviously your rings don't have energy so just go for one modifier and then uh, finish it with prototype crafting. Maybe get some resistances, maybe life. Uh, it shouldn't cost you too much to just craft it yourself. Obviously, don't aim for any like tier 1 modifiers, just tier 3, tier 4 are perfectly fine early on. And for example, for something like uh, chest, you just go for minion damage, amount of energy, and life and resistance, and so on. But the other thing is I highly suggest uh, going for is just hero relics, hero memories, and slate. So I what I would do is I would just go to hero relics, uh, go for your uh, class, so for me it would be order calling, and just uh, search which modifier is the best for you. And usually hero memory effect is just the best for almost every character, especially early on when you don't have any legendary uh, hero relics and memories. So I would just search for any uh, hero memory effect, and for example here one you can see pretty good one for just 5 FE, tier 1 minion attack and caspi, 26% hero memory effect, so this is a pretty good one. Here for some additional defense, and it also has 35% hero memory effect, so you could also buy one like that. Uh, this one has some additional life, so I probably would not go for this one, but you get the idea, you just go through it and just find something that fits your budget and also uh, fits your needs. I would uh, definitely suggest going for something around 5 FE. Here you can get even plus 1 minion quantity, but it's gonna reduce the overload effect, so it's just a decent one, but nothing too crazy. And then, because of the hero memory effect, hero memories are also gonna be very important. So for order calling, I would just uh, type overload, because overload is very important for this build, and just go for something with increased overload effect. So this one, 3 FE, 10% movement speed, 21% overload effect, pretty good. Movement speed is going to be decent for progressing through the uh, maps. Here, additional minion damage, just 6 FE. So you can definitely get some cheap ones for not that much currency. And as you can see here, I did find around 20 FE during the uh, progression through the story. So 20 FE is definitely going to buy you a few hero memories and relics. And another thing is the uh, Divinity Slates. So for Divinity Slates, you would just go for the one that is the best for your build. So for my, me, it would be God of Machines uh, in the Advanced section. And again, you would, just type, you would just search for anything that is good for your build. And remember, all of these modifiers are talents. So if you don't know which modifiers are good for you, just check your tree and see what talents you are using. So I would just type here Minion and just search for any modifiers that are good for minions. For example, minion crit rating, minion crit damage is one of the best modifiers. 
obviously eventually you can find uh, some good ones with or buy some good ones with two good modifiers uh, but early on just focus on getting one with just one very good modifier so here it, the one also has a uh, nine branding attempts it gives you a little bit of uh, life regen and it costs only eight fe uh, you can find probably even cheaper ones this one for free fe very good modifier six branding attempts so i will just buy this one for free fe and just to show you how branding works uh, you just go to the crafting vendor go to a brand divinity slate you put this one in here and you just continue branding and you're gonna add additional modifiers in here so this one gave me some movement speed uh, nothing here minion critical strike rating uh, max energy shield and once you have three modifiers then you have a chance to upgrade them and uh, this is gonna cost you forging wedges so I go again and now I got minion attack and cast speed instead of movement speed so this is a pretty good one let's go again region mana and i had minion crit rating so i'm actually gonna go back to crit rating it is a bit better and i am no longer have any branding attempts so this is a very good slate as you can see 60 so total 100 percent minion crit rating 15 crit damage and 8 percent attack speed so this is a very good starting slate and you can just continue doing that uh, until you fill all of your uh, space in here and if you are missing some space obviously you can uh, go in here and uh, adjust the shapes and so on so uh, you can also do that and now the last thing i want to uh, mention is the reason why i did stop at time mark 7 and that is because i think at this point if you uh, have enough damage that you can kill time mark 7 you can actually do quite a lot of strategies uh, in the uh, time arc 7 that can just give you a ton of currency and at this point you're just gonna be able to uh, start making a good amount of uh, flame elementium and just buy pretty good gear so what i mean by that is first of all when you kill any watcher in time arc 7 you have a guaranteed chance to drop the uh, time arc 8 beacons and in case you are wondering they actually are very expensive right now let me see if I can. I have any of them. I actually do. So Steelforge Beacon right now costs 3, maybe even 3.5 FE each. So every 8 maps in Steelforge, you actually you get a random beacon. It doesn't really matter which one you do. But basically every time you do any Watcher, you're going to drop uh, one of the beacons. And if you drop this one, it's going to be 3.5 FE. Uh, Voidlands is like 2.5. So you get the idea. Every 8 maps, it's just going to give you straight up 2.5 FE. On top of that, you drop the beginning, which is a fragment to be able to kill Traveler. And these ones also go for around 1 to 1 1.5 FE. So you get between 3 to even 5 FE, depending on what kind of other items you drop from these watchers. So uh, one of the best strategies at this point you can do is just go to your deck and get all of the... Uh, cards for additional stage points so like pt or a grateful so you can just get as many uh, watchers per hour so you just basically do a boss rushing strategy where you just do as many small maps as possible which is basically exactly what you did during the progression you just do uh, the maps that have uh, uh, additional stage points card and if they don't have them you just go for the uh, smallest maps as possible just so you can do them faster and the other good uh, cards you can go for are cards like this, which give you additional netherum, uh, netherum resonance from bosses, which is also pretty good for both rushing, additional compasses when netherum resonance is dropped, and also uh, just straight up uh, bosses have an additional chance to drop the compasses. I don't have this one right here, but it is this one, so just 40% chance for bosses to drop compasses. So you can actually make a decent amount of money just from killing the map bosses. On top of that, one of the best strategies right now, and it's pretty much always has been one of the best strategies, is just Dark Surge. And Dark Surge is very good also with boss rushing, which basically means you just do uh, maps as fast as possible, you uh, kill the purple monsters on the way, and then at the end you just spam uh, Dark Surge and you get a ton of currency especially if you get the bosses then you sell the keys for the key gun and they go for uh, between 5 to even 20 or 30 fe depending on which one you drop so yeah at this point once you kill traveler 7 you should have enough enough, enough damage to just be able to do boss rushing strategy and dark Souls strategy and you can just farm a ton of currency and eventually you're gonna have a pretty good gear and maybe you're gonna be able to farm time mark 8 and uh, some bosses and so on so 
that's gonna be it for this video thanks for watching and see you next time